last time we were discussing about the economic analysis uh, the ultimate objective has been after evaluating the performance of solar energy systems on long term basis uh, we couple it with the economic analysis a uh, simple issue is about this life save uh, savings method or the payback period which we have indicated by the simplest possible thing whatever is the fuel cost saved in the first year to the investment uh, it may require a few years to recover the investment though it's a simplistic calculation now we shall go a little detailed about the so called life cycle savings method the p1 p2 method that means the life cycle savings are calculated based upon two parameters of p1 and p2 in general the basic idea of the method is all the expenses on account of installing the solar system has to be taken into account and calculate all the savings uh, take into account economic scenario fuel prices inflation and depreciation and performance degradation if possible in evaluating the fo similarly when you have installed the solar energy system there will be certain expenses which may involve the principal and interest paid on the total investment needed to install the solar energy system and the auxiliary power cost so let's say installments and the auxiliary power in addition there will be certain maintenance cost even cleaning the solar collectors and that may include the labor also and mainly the savings come from fuel cost what is the fuel it saved and uh, there could be tax benefits because this is a green uh, investment uh, there are tax benefits given by the government in various countries and then government incentives if any in other words uh, there may be a subsidy in that and there may be additional benefits uh, by the government by installing if you install a solar energy system and uh, do not use the conventional fuel so in general the life cycle savings as we have explained the amount of uh, money that the system is going to save to the owner during the lifetime of the solar energy system we will call it the life cycle savings so the calculation of this is an involved process because the fuel prices do not remain constant the interest rates may not remain constant auxiliary power rate may not remain constant so all these features have to be taken into account of course assuming a certain scenario and these features have been accounted by brian mule and beckman the reference will be given is available in your uh, companion notes so this is commonly known as the life cycle savings analysis short form lcs analysis and of course as we had pointed out earlier a system is considered economically viable if lcs is positive and not viable if lcs is negative so if you maximize the life cycle savings 
in the sense when it is positive, it will lead to some sort of a optimum configuration for the system under consideration. So, now we split the total cost of the system C s as comprising of an area dependent cost C a times A c plus an area independent cost. In other words, if a collector area is taken into account, if 100 square meters are there, it should be 100 multiplied by something and if it is 200, it will be 200 multiplied by something. So, for each collector, you may also associate a certain amount of piping, certain amount of uh, platform, certain amount of uh, stands or whatever are necessary. So, you can put all those things in this fact of C A, which depend upon the area of the collector. And in addition, this C E may be coming from uh, heat exchanger and maybe to some extent storage tank, though that is also proportional to the uh, collector size and then uh, pumps, etcetera. So, unless the size drastically changes, the pump and the heat exchanger and the storage tank do not change directly in proportion to the cost of the area of the collector. So, C s is a m x plus c type of equation, where C a is the cost per unit area of the collector involved and C is a fixed cost, which is independent of the area. So, this C a could be R s per meter square and C e is simply rupees. So, Brandmuller and Beckman, they said all income and expenses which are necessary to evaluate the economic viability of the system are characterized by two parameters P 1 and P 2. So, P 1 if you want to have an idea before we try to calculate that is the ratio of the life cycle fuel cost savings to the first year fuel cost savings. So, in other words this P 1 will take into account how the fuel prices are going to change over the life cycle of the solar energy system. And P 2 similarly is sort of a indicator of the expenses is the ratio of life cycle expenditure incurred because of installing the solar energy system so is the ratio of life cycle expenditures incurred because of the additional capital investment to the initial investment. So, you may make a down payment 100 percent or 80 percent or 10 percent and uh, there will be several things like depreciation of the system, inflation etcetera, etcetera. So, all costs proportional to the first year fuel costs are included in P 1. All costs 
proportional to the first year fuel costs this is just to make you appreciate before you go for a formula to calculate the p1 and p2s uh, basically p1 is going to indicate how much you are going to save okay so all that should be proportional to the first year fuel costs uh, according to the economic scenario then any costs that are proportional to the investment are included in p2 to the investment or included so you may make a down payment of 10% if the investment is larger the 10% will be larger if the depreciation is more the final value will be less if the inflation of the system is higher my final value will be higher <coughs> they are all included in p2 so life cycle savings is simply given by the parameter p1 cf times load and the load fraction f minus p2 times ca ac plus ca so basically if you forget about p1 and p2 it's almost like that simplistic uh, payback period calculation life cycle savings will be the cost of the fuel in the first year multiplied by the load fraction to the solar load fraction or uh, load into the load fraction that will give you the energy delivered so this is the amount of fuel money <coughs> saved in the first year minus the cost of the system okay and cf is the cost of the conventional energy which could be r s per gigajoule So, how do we optimize uh, AC or system? Such that at the chosen or arrived at AC LCS is a maximum uh, you recall so far we have not said how to calculate p1 and p2 however sufficient indication is given that life cycle savings can be written in terms of p1 and the cost of the fuel in the first year multiplied by the energy delivered in the first year minus the cost of the system multiplied by an appropriate factor right so this will be optimum will be delta by delta ac of lcs should be equal to 0 which will be p1 cf l times df by DAC minus P2 CA, right? Because that is the AC that differentiate with respect to the area that goes off, and the fixed cost doesn't give anything. So from this, uh, you can find out DF by DAC will be P2 CA upon 
P1 Cf L. So, if the slope of the solar load fraction with respect to area equal to P2 Ca upon P1 Cf L, that point will represent either a maximum or a minimum. In the present context, it will be a maximum. One can easily verify that if you divide this or rather second differentiate it, it will be negative or just equal to 0. So, now we have briefly indicated about the life cycle savings curve. This is the area A C and this is L C S positive and negative and this is area versus F curve. This should be the optimum that is where you have your LCS maximum. So, if you draw a line with slope equal to of course, d f by d a c is p 2 c a by p 1 c f l. So, you know this number having calculated p 1 and p 2 c a is known, c f is known, l is known. Okay. So, you will find out this number and draw a line with uh, the slope being equal to this number and wherever it cuts of course, I have drawn it little away just to be clear. So, that is where my optimum F and A C lie. So, the idea of the analysis is that you find out that the life cycle savings is a maximum where your load fraction delivered need not be 100 percent, but the returns per rupee investment is the maximum. Okay. So, that is how now you understand the importance of the solar load fraction versus the area curve for the long term performance and that we have struggled uh, through a large number of equations and methods to find out F versus AC curve. That combined with the life cycle savings will yield what should be the optimum for the particular system or application under consideration. Now, let us try to uh, have an idea of how to calculate this P 1 and P 2. So, this is a bit of economics and uh, you just uh, listen carefully and then you can go through uh, these slides in detail and then work out for yourself. So, all costs proportional to the first year fuel costs. or in P 1 and similarly any cost proportional to the investment is in P 2 and P 1 and P 2 are defined by uh, P 1 is equal to 1 minus C T bar times P W F N E I D. Let me explain where C is a flag C equal to 0 if the property is non income producing. In other words, we are distinguishing even if it is a solar energy 
uh, hot water system. If it is used for domestically for bathing or cleaning dishes, it is non-income producing. But if it is used for degreasing or in any automobile industry or any other industry, it will be considered as income producing and C should be equal to 1 if the property is income producing. In other words, if simply if uh, C is equal to 0, it present worth factor of any ID is nothing but P1. So, and of course, PWF is the present worth factor which will depend upon uh, any the term of the economic analysis it may be 10 years, it may be 20 years, it may be 15 years or 5 years like that. It could be ideally the life of the solar energy system, but in case you are not sure, uh, you would like to see whether the life cycle savings are positive or not and when positive what is the minimum any that could be required. IF is the fuel inflation rate. So, the fuel prices may be going up at the rate of 10 percent, 10 percent, 5 percent or whatever. So, you definitely the compared to the first year fuel savings to the total fuel savings will depend upon what is IF and D is the discount rate. Uh, this is a uh, delicate thing to understand and one would think that IF is equal to D, but IF in the context of the present analysis is the fuel inflation rate. It is the inflation rate of the fuel only not the overall inflation rate. Uh, this discount rate D is if you want to have say R S 5000 in 2015, what you should invest in a bank or anywhere today in uh, let us say 2012. So, you want to have 5000 rupees 3 years later from today. So, there is 5000 rupees is discounted and it becomes 3832 whatever is the number uh, in 2012 terms of money. Okay? So, if there is a good chance that the inflation rate and the discount rate are equal uh, and in general it should be the same if you are talking about overall discount rate and overall uh, inflation rate. But since you are talking only about the fuel inflation and the discount rate in general, so these things will differ in calculating your P1 and P2. Now, P2 you have a long expression. So, I think uh, this should be focused a little longer. D plus 1 minus D and present worth of N minimum 0 D upon present worth of N L 0 m times sorry minus 1 minus d into t bar and uh, this multiplied by 
present worth of n minimum m d times m minus 1 by pwf of nl 0 m you don't have to be scared about this long expression because only thing that is dangerous is that present worth factor fortunately there are websites given that n minimum or whatever the next number and the d it will calculate and tell you the uh, present worth factor straight away so of course i will give the formula 2 but this looks like an enigma because you don't know the economic term the present worth factor which simply means i mean uh, if 1000 rupees are to be spent after 10 years what is the present worth of that plus 1 minus ct bar times ms into present worth factor of n e i d plus t not t bar 1 minus t bar times v into present worth factor of n e i comma d minus c t bar this I am writing I suppose you will be able to uh, see it from your screens while I am writing or the typed version and min dashed or you can refer to Branwell and Beckman's original paper which I have given the reference or the textbook by Duffy and Beckman. So, this is available and you make sure that the expression that you are using is correct rather I am writing is correct. So, this is a leng lengthy expression and each symbol has got a meaning, has got a explanation m annual mortgage interest rate. These terms those who are not familiar with a lot of economics uh, may sound uh, unfamiliar, but you can easily go to Wikipedia and then try to have a understanding because I my whole object to here is to say that that there are rational methods to evaluate the economic viability or rather than a hand waving approach ok 2 years it is fine right instead of that you can actually calculate depending upon the economic scenario of the country the location depending upon the application. So, NL is the term of loan and minimum years over which mortgage payments contribute to the analysis actually it will be the minimum of N E N L right which we already defined and D is the depreciation time 
in years. Then you also have a n min dashed, right? Oh, yes, that is the last but one term in the previous expression. Years over which mortgage payments contribute to the analysis. Uh, this is minimum of N E or N D. Okay? So, it is n minimum and n minimum dash are the same. In one expression, we use the minimum of n e or n l and in the other expression minimum of n e or n d. Okay. Either depreciation or the economic term, depreciation or the term of flow. Okay. They all in principle can be different. So, if n e turns out to be the minimum, n minimum will be equal to n minimum dashed. T is the property rate on assessed value. And D is the ratio of down payment initial investment. So, some of these terms uh, look unfamiliar uh, because uh, as students or as uh, youngsters you may not be dealing and some of them are even unfamiliar to me too until I try to find out. Uh, suppose uh, a house is going to cost about uh, uh, 32 lakhs in India, right? And then you may be paying through um, equalized monthly installments to the bank or to the um, whoever has given you the loan. Uh, but then there may be a 10 percent down payment. So, you may pay 3.2 lakhs initially and then the rest in terms of uh, installments. So, D is a ratio of down payment to the initial investment whether you have not whether or not you have really actually put in that money. So, in other words the commitment for the investment is so much out of which you paid a certain percentage as the down payment that is called the down payment. And M S is the ratio of first year. miscellaneous costs this could include auxiliary power maintenance etc to initial investment. So, this in a way is going to tell you out of uh, 32 lakhs or 40 lakhs whatever you have invested on the solar energy system or in general anything, uh, you need the ratio of uh, the first year miscellaneous cost to initial investments. In other words, if it is a large property, probably your first year cost will be also higher and if it is a small property, it will be less. And the V 
is the ratio of assessed valuation of the solar energy system in first year to the initial investment in the system. So, assessed valuation of the solar energy system in first year to the initial investment in the system. So, you may not pay all the uh, amount. So, there is a particular ratio. So, because that is going to decide how many installments you will pay, how much you will pay over how many years and consequently your present worth factors etcetera, etcetera. Rv is the ratio of resale value at end of period of analysis to initial investment. So, this could be a factor 1 less than 1 or even more than 1 if the inflation is uh, high. So, one has to find out if the RV is higher, it is a better system. In general, the economic viability will become better and better. Now, in general, present worth factor over a period n with inflation rate i and a depreciation rate d, right? It depends upon three parameters. is calculated from sigma j is equal to 1 to n that is the total number of events 1 plus i to the power j minus 1 by 1 plus d to the power j times one by D minus I one minus one plus I by one plus D to the power N if i is not equal to d. So, this should be equal to and simply n by 1 plus i if i is equal to d. Right? So, if i is equal to d, this will be a d, this will be a d, j minus 1 by j, it will be 1 by 1 plus d summed over 1 to n will be n by 1 plus i or 1 plus d. Okay. So, 1 by d minus i into 1 minus 1 plus i by 1 plus d to the power n that is the same thing which we are written in terms of n and uh, this is summed up over this uh, period. n is the number of payments which may be your number of years of analysis. and I is the inflation rate and D the discount rate. Yeah. 
So as I was pointing out, uh, the inflation rate and uh, discount rate could be similar, similar order of magnitude at least. That is borne out by the fact that this present worth factor is given if phi is equal to d and if i is not equal to d. Now, uh, I am sure still these terms will be a little unfamiliar to you. So, you go through them a good number of times and uh, you can uh, see a very good references even in Wikipedia and another website edgeasdesigner.com and where you have even the so called calculators. Just you give i, d, n, it will tell you your present worth factor of the quantity that you are looking for and then you make sure your calculation is correct. Okay? So, we made that uh, simple uh, payback period calculation in the last class and uh, however, I was not very uh, happy with that coal having a payback period of some 37 years or so. And then I realized that the price is at the pit head of the coal mine as per the website of Coal India. So, consequently considerable transportation cost is, a, is involved and I inquired locally and the rate changed uh, quite a bit. So, I thought let me compare uh, the coal LPG and the electricity relatively by the simplest method of this one. So, the first year savings at the rate of 16 gigajoules per month for 12 months at a solar load fraction of 0.6 will turn out to be 115.2 gigajoules. These are consistent numbers only thing is I am doing it only for one year so that my payback period is the total upon the one year cost or savings. And if you assume a 80 percent efficiency for both LPG and uh, coal based system, coal saved 115.2 by the calorific value in gigajoules 0 0.023 into the efficiency which is 80 percent that will be 6261 kilograms and uh, LPG saved will be 115.2 upon 0 0.04 gigajoules that is the calorific value multiplied by 0 0.8 the efficiency will be 3600 kilograms. Electric energy saved So, efficiency is equal to 80 percent in those two cases at this will be a little higher which will be equal to it is 12 kilowatts for 12 hours a day multiplied by 365 multiplied by the solar load fraction 0 0.6 by efficiency 0 0.9 this will be equal to 35040 kilowatt hours and we already estimated system cost at rs 8000 per meter square for 50 square meters will be rs 4 lakhs okay So, in a simple form of table I have shown here uh, the fuel 
and uh, at the rate of savings first year and payback period. in years. So, first one is coal at 1.1 1 rupees 70 paisa is too low a value 3 per kg. This comes to about RS 18,783 leading to 21 years and at R6 per kg this comes to double 37 566 this becomes half 10.5 years and R10 a kg which will be R is 62,616 leading to 6.3 years. These are not uh, cooked up numbers and I have locally verified uh, that the coal just household coal is sold at about rupees 10 per kg. So, 6.3 years still it is a large uh, time if you compare with the uh, coal. This is about 450 rupees. Of course, there is a recent hike for first six cylinders and uh, the next seventh and onwards. I do not know whether it will be the sixth one or the subsequent one. So, I took 35 rupees a kg and this will come to RS 1,26,000. And this comes to 3.17 years, quite reasonable. Electricity, this is where we had little bit of confusion. So, if you take at the lowest spectrum, rupees 3 per kilowatt hour, this comes to RS 105, 120, that comes to 3. 8 years and if you take uh, in the domestic uh, bills I have verified it varies from 2.75 2 rupees 75 paisa to 7 rupees or so depending upon the block and if somebody is using a electric gazer he will definitely be in that higher range. this comes to 1.9 years. The numbers, I do not say they are unimportant, but what we are uh, trying to essentially imply is that the viability of the solar energy system will depend upon with what source of energy you are comparing. right? And if you go to wood, charcoal or the wood picked up by uh, in India by poor people who sell it maybe at a, a rupee a kg or even less. Then if you compare that heating uh, with any solar or electrical that will be highly looks uneconomical, but this seems to be ok and these are definitely with respect to electricity it should be somewhere in between even LPG 3 years. So, again I am assuming inflation and depreciation or uh, these costs may uh, cancel each other and uh, this is a fairly indicative of the actual uh, accrued savings or the payback period. Okay? So, we shall consider the other important things having done this economic analysis. Uh, in our curriculum we have got the passive systems. And that is what we shall do in the next lecture. Thank you.